What's going on, everybody? So today we're going to be talking about the reversing valve, heat pump, uh, two important facts you need to know, and some common problems. All right, so here we go. All right, everybody. So this right here is uh, the reversing valve, okay? So basically, this is where all the magic happens. So for starters, let's go ahead and talk about what happens in the reversing valve when the unit is in cool mode, okay? All right, everybody. So inside this part of the reversing valve, there's two ports, okay? Two-way ports. So it's either going to be set to the right side, which is going to be this two uh, ports here, or it's going to be set to the left side, which is going to be these two ports here, okay? So refrigerant from the compressor is gonna come through in here, travels through this little tubing here, exits through here, comes around, and pushes refrigerant through this side of the reversing valve, and that causes the two-way port to be set to the uh, uh, to the right side ports, okay? So it's gonna be uh, through these two tubings here, okay? So refrigerant uh, is gonna come in through here, and it's gonna exit through this port right here okay so it's gonna go exit and that's gonna travel around the system it's gonna come back into the reversing valve through this port right here and it's gonna exit back to the compressor to this one okay so let me show you guys here let me see if i can shine the light here a little bit so you can see the exit on that port right there and well you can't really can't see anything because you have your two-way ports there Okay, so that is the basic function of this uh, reversing valve in cool mode. So let me show you guys what that looks like on the actual pizza unit. All right, you guys, so let me show you the very basic function of the system in cool mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off at the compressor. All right, so from the compressor, refrigerant leaves through this uh, uh, line right here. From there, it enters the reversing valve through this port here, exits through the port we talked about, uh, from there, it travels through here, and it goes into the condenser coil where uh, heat is released. So from there, it exits the condenser coil through this tubing here, goes into the filter dryer. From the filter dryer, it goes up into the capillary tube. Okay, so from the capillary tube, it goes into this uh, tubing here, and from there, it enters the evaporator coil where all the heat in the room is going to get trapped. From the evaporator coil, it uh, exits through that line at the bottom there comes all the way through here enters the reversing valve through here uh, this is our two-way ports we talked about uh, then it exits through here goes back into the compressor and the cycle continues until your room is cool so now let's talk about what happens to the reversing valve in heat pump mode right, so again Refrigerant is going to come back into this port of the reversing valve refrigerant is going to leave through this little port here but now this time, uh, the, the control board is going to send power to this uh, solenoid valve here, uh, closing the port to this tubing here. Okay, so obviously refrigerant now is going to leave through this little copper tubing here, pushing refrigerant into this side of the reversing valve. So our two-way ports that was originally here is going to shift over now to this side. Okay, so refrigerant from the compressor is going to come in through here. Now, this time it's going to exit through this port here, goes around the system, comes back, travels, and then it comes back into this, uh, through this port right here. And then it exits the reversing valve through here, back to the compressor, and the cycle continues. So let me show you guys what that looks like on the actual PTEC. All right, you guys, so this is a very basic function of the system cycle in heat pump mode, okay? Let's go ahead and start off at the compressor. So refrigerant exits the compressor to, through this tubing here, comes down, enters the reversing valve. Uh, now instead of exiting through this tubing here, now it's gonna exit through this one right here, okay? So our two-way ports now have shifted to this side, so uh, now the refrigerant is gonna exit through this tubing here, okay? So from there, refrigerant is going to go into the evaporator coil where the evaporator coil is now going to act like the condenser coil so now instead of the evaporator coil trapping heat now this time it's going to release heat so it's going to release heat into the room now from there the refrigerant exits the evaporator through the capillary tubes okay now 
the capillary tube is no longer your metering device, okay? So refrigerant still continues through the capillary tubes until it reaches this point right here, okay? So in here is a piston, okay? So now that is gonna be the metering device. So from there, refrigerant travels into the metering device and then travels into the condenser coil, which now acts like the evaporator coil, trapping heat from the outside and uh, from there, refrigerant exits the condenser coil through this tubing here, goes back into the reversing valve, exits through this one, back to the compressor, and the cycle continues. So that was a very basic explanation about the heat pump cycle, but there's still two things you need to know. All right, you guys, so number one will be that the heat pump is going to work within uh, four degrees of the set point, okay? So anything lower than that is just going to run on the heater coils. Right, so for example, uh, let's say your room is at 50 degrees and you have your heat set to 70. Uh, the heater coil is going to run till it reaches 66 degrees. And then from there, it's just going to automatically uh, activate your heat pump. All right, you guys. So number two will be that if this thermistor right here uh, senses uh, anywhere below 40 degrees, it's going to lock out that compressor and it's going to activate the heating coils. So if your heat pump is not working, I would recommend to check if the control board is still programmed to heat pump uh so to do that uh we go we gotta go into the settings uh so press and hold the plus and the minus hit that off button twice uh we're looking for c3 okay so c3 uh in c3 we're supposed to see an h in c3 okay so if you don't see an h that's because the control board is not programmed to heat pump so uh go ahead and set it to h and your heat pump should start working okay all right, guys, so another reason why the heat pump may not be working is because uh, the control board may not be sending power to that solenoid valve. Uh, so let me show you guys how to check that. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the heater within those four degrees. All right, so now the control board should be sending 230 volts to that uh, uh, solenoid valve. All right, so we're going to check from the uh, terminal here where it says reversing valve to line one. Okay, so... Line one is either over here, or uh, if you follow it, it's also on the terminal block, it's on this side, okay? So I'm gonna check for from reversing valve to line one. And as you can probably see, uh, this control board is sending power to the reversing valve, okay? So if, if, uh, if you check and you're not getting any power, that means that the problem is the control board. All right, everybody, so anything else, I would recommend to get a professional to come out and take a look at your PTEC unit. Uh, so other than that, that's going to wrap up this video. I uh, hope this was a help to you. all Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the section below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, see you guys on the next video. Y'all have a good one.